So how do you still win to replace CSS in your React application? In this video, I'll be showing you how you can convert your existing CSS rules into Tailwind class names. And for this, we'll be using a combination of the documentation for Tailwind and GitHub Copilot. So as it turns out, GitHub Copilot is pretty good in helping us to convert things like CSS into Tailwind class names. In case you wonder why I'm using Tailwind, well, for a few simple reasons. The first one is I don't really like writing CSS because it's just too diverse and it could be pretty complex. The one thing I really like about Tailwind is not even so much manually writing Tailwind class names, but being able to use all sets of a sort of pre-configured class names or a composition of class names in order to style my components without having to think about how to style them. So it's almost like a design system on its own. So let's dive into VS Code and see how to convert your CSS rules into Tailwind. Okay, so we've set up a new application using V that is working with React and TypeScript. Um, we create some components, we create the basic layout for the application, and then finally we use the web APIs uh, from a browser to drag and drop these tickets from one lane to another. This is all very cool, and it gives you an idea on how to use drag and drop functionality. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is how you can style this application using Tailwind. And if you're not familiar with Tailwind, Tailwind is a really cool project, or actually it's a library that helps you to style applications in a generic way. So just by adding a new class name, you'll be able to sort of style your application. And for me, I used to be working with uh, styled components. I completely migrated to Tailwind because it's just so much better. If I want to install Tailwind in a V project, I can just go to this page and follow all the steps to do it. So I already have a V application set up, which is a project management board. So in my project management board that looks like this, I want to use Tailwind for styling. To use Tailwind for styling here, I need to install the CSS, the NPM dependencies. So I'm going to be installing Tailwind CSS, of course. I'll be installing post CSS, which is something I need for supporting of Tailwind and then auto prefixer. So just by running npm install like this, I have the main Tailwind CSS library. Second step is I need to use npx in order to initialize a new configuration file for Tailwind. And with this configuration file, I'm getting a tailwind.config.js file. And in this file I can, or actually I need to tell Tailwind uh, where my content lies. So I need to tell them that I want to have my TSX files and also my JS files in case I have any, well, maybe JSX files too, or maybe uh, TS files as well. And those need to be styled using Tilwit. And I probably also need to use the take the main index HTML file and make sure that Tilwind is aware of this file too. So I have this, my index HTML file is actually right here, the top level, so I can just do this. And then it already found my JS, JSX, TSX files, so that's all good. Second thing I need to do is I need to go into my index.css file, the main one. It has a lot of different things and I'm actually going to get rid of all of them because it was just boilerplate CSS generated by Veet. Instead, I want to use the boilerplate CSS from Tailwind. So I'm adding it here. I'm using the add Tailwind alias rule. Let me see what does it actually mean and why do I get these yellow lines? For this sort of thing, I always like to ask Copilot, like what's going on? So these are rules added by the Tailwind CSS framework and somehow it's not being recognized by my CSS preprocessor. I'm pretty sure I installed auto prefixer and post CSS. So maybe I should revisit whatever's going wrong there. Uh, but then again, the yellow lines are just warnings. They're not errors, so we can just continue. If I'm now going to run npm run dev, it's going to restart my feed application. And if I would go to the browser, I can already see small changes because now I'm relying on feed to style my application rather than the boilerplate CSS I had in the beginning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to one by one change my components from uh, using CSS to using feed. Let me actually get rid of the CSS files along the way because it just feels like clutter. So I have my components. Let's go and start with the board components first. It's taking CSS from here, uh, which I don't want. Instead, I'm going to add my own styling using Tailwind. So let me see what's actually in this CSS file. 
in the CSS file, I'm using display grid. I'm having a four column grid, and then I have a gap between these grids of 20 pixels. I can actually use grids in Tailwind as well. And for these grids, I can pretty much do the same thing. So in here, you can see I have grid template columns, repeat, blah, blah, blah. I can actually remove this line and replace it with a class name. So I don't need to have this class name anymore as well. I can just say I want to have a grid and I want to have grid with columns four. And if I save this, I should be getting a four grid column, which I actually don't get. So let me see what's going on. Let me see actually if things are working as expected by going to my header, do something like background black here. This should turn my header black. Not seeing any difference just yet. So let me try and figure out what else might be going wrong. Maybe I made another fall here. Well, it's stupid. So this should be commas rather than a pipe. And now you can see I'm seeing differences. So I'm going back to my header because I don't like this black header. So let's make this background blue. And then the way it works in Tailwind, you don't have a color blue. So you have a color blue with some sort of um, layer of intensity. So this blue is kind of subtle. I maybe want a slightly darker blue like this. So this is more like my original blue. And then I probably want to say I have color, which is white. I think I do it like this. I copy paste this and add a class name to my h12. I need to prefix it and say I want to make my text white like this. So now I have a white one. That's cool. And then let me also see how to change the font size. Let's say this should be text large. Oh, probably I want it to be even larger. So maybe I can do XXL. Oh, it's 2XL. I maybe want it to be even larger. So let me see the largest size I can get for text is probably something like text 6XL. Oh yeah, this is good. And then I want to add some padding too. So I can do padding should be four. Okay, well, so this is nice. So padding works slightly different in Tailwind. So let me bring up this file. So you actually have multiple ways of doing padding. Um, so the padding works by a number. And as you can see, if I'm saying number one, you can also do padding top like this, but if, if I will be doing padding two, it's actually doing eight pixels or 0 0.5 relational, depending on the size of your screen. Uh, so relational in a way. Probably you want to make this a bit bigger and say padding here should be something like six. It works with most even number and then in here i also want to say i want to have my text in the center this is pretty cool right i have my css here and i'm going to get rid of it and in this file i need to add one final thing i want to say margin bottom uh, let's make it something like two it's not enough let's make it four this is better so now i have my header done let's go back to my board because i was doing something there so i was changing it to be grid grid columns four and then i want my gap to be four as well because i want my gap and my padding to be the same here and as you can see i have a four column grid again but i've got my grid now using these two lines of classes and a class name instead of all these shenanigans i have here let me also get rid of board.css and now I no longer have a CSS component there. The two places where I still have CSS is my link component and my task component. So I want these to look slightly similar, uh, but maybe a bit less ugly. So let me go to my link component where I have a background color light blue. I have some padding and then I have a border button there. First, get rid of CSS. And just to show you, there's no more CSS involved now. I want to go to this div and I want to say my background should be blue and the not so dark blue might be 300. Might be still too dark. Let's do 100. So this is good. This is a good light blue, I'd say. Um, then I want to do some padding. Let's say padding of four. Okay, well, it's starting to look nice. Then I want to do something with my H2 thing. I probably want to add a class name here uh, that says something like text center. To center a text like this. And then I want to set the size. So maybe I can do text XL without space. 
Okay, well, this is good. And maybe I want to do text bolt. I mean, that's the thing with Dillwind, right? You're obviously, you're just trying things and see if it works. So let me go here and see if we can do a font weight. Uh, so we can do font bolt instead of text bolt. Sometimes it's just about finding your way around in Dillwind. Here, I now have a bold font. I probably want to do some margin bottom. Not too much, maybe like two. And I used to have these lines under them, but I don't think I like these lines anymore. So I'm not going to re-add them. I am going to increase my border bottom. This is what it looks now. I'm almost done, I'd say. The final thing I need to do is I need to get rid of the styling uh, of this CSS file here. Make sure I've deleted it here at the top. And then the final thing I'm going to style is my uh, task component. What I'm going to do, I've been doing this manually for now. Let me ask GitHub Copilot and see what it says. So create Dillwind classes for the following CSS. Let me see if it can help us. Nice, nice. Let me see if I would be taking this and let's look at my task. It now looks like this. Let me see if I, after deleting these CSS here and then adding these class names, it will be getting a similar result. Oh, wow. It's pretty much the same, right? So the only thing that's weird is it has some sort of margin bottom, which I don't know how it created this. Margin bottom 20 pixels, it turned it into margin bottom 20 instead of probably something that should be, I don't know, four. Cool. And the only thing I don't really dislike is not having a sort of a semi bold font here. So I want to do double S and I want to say font is bold. Nice. So I have my project board, I've added styling and I'm still able to drag and drop all these items. But this is pretty cool, right? That was pretty easy, right? It's one of the main reasons I love Billwind. You don't need to create additional files anymore, but you just alter some class names and you'll be able to get styling for your application. If you like Tailwind, I advise you to have a look at Tailwind UI. With Tailwind UI, uh, you can automatically sort of drag and drop, or not really drag and drop, you just copy paste them, copy paste the class names, and you'll be able to style your application and make it look pretty neat. You don't need any design skills for this because they have a whole range of designs ready for you. And the only thing you need to do is copy paste the React code they have on their website, or even just copy paste the class names themselves. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. And also, if you have any questions around using Tailwind or maybe whatever Tailwind component I like best, make sure to drop them in the comments.